Episode 31 of the Skipping 40s podcast, the first episode of 2012, which is your last year on Earth. Yeah, we're back. Good. It's yeah, been we're, a while. We spent some time it's been, off. Been a few weeks. Been a while. Shut up. <laughs> My name's Alex. With I'm Benson. I'm Ryan. I'm Michael. If you have any questions or comments to us, send us an email at podcast at tipping 40scom or leave us a voicemail at 218-666-8407. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to talk about our beer of the week. Mike's going to talk about his stance on buying houses. It may have changed. We'll recap our... No, what, no not really. Well, from no, what you well, previously sort of. thought for. Yeah, yes, it I'll did. I'll go over it. Well, obviously it did. We'll recap our webathon that we did, and uh, Ben's is going to talk about directors and some specific movies they've made. Yes. So we're no longer doing... Uh, also, Top 5 Most Wanted. So we're no longer doing the uh, movie picks of the week. We're still going to talk about movies, but we're not going to pick, you know, which ones made the most money. Did we game. say who won? Oh, I won. Yes, yeah. you did. And I, I lost, so I, I need to drink bacon if we beer. Actually well, I don't think we good ever... for you. We have one in my fridge. <laughs> oh, we have we an, ex- here. an extra one from the <laughs> webathon. Well, I'll have to drink it on our, uh, on our episode of Let's Drink Play it right before you commit suicide. Okay. I'm yeah, I guess I don't get anything for ending. winning because we never decided what it is. So. <laughs> nah. Low job. Yeah, okay. So, uh... Our beer of the week this week, I picked it. It is Franziskaner Hefeweizen. This is brewed by Spatten in Munchen, Germany. It's 5%. And this is like, I've always thought of this as like one of the more traditional Hefeweizens where it tastes like what you expect the Hefeweizen to taste yeah. like. It's, I think it's very similar to a Weihenstefaner. It's pretty light, but it still has a little bit of spice to it. It's, it's nice, pretty sugary, actually, in calm. my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of sugary. It, it is, sugary. It is compared to sweet. other Hefeweizens. A lot of places around here kind of have it on draft. It's Pretty fucking good on draft. Yeah, yeah, it is very. Also, good on you draft. can get one of those 500 milliliter bottles for like two bucks. Yeah, which is pretty good. It's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty cheap beer for the quality of the beer. I would say. Yeah, so if you like half of Bison's, definitely try that guy out. It's they also good. make a Dunkel, which is good as well. Yeah, it's it's made by Spat, and they make an you know, Optimator and all this other stuff. It's, it's all German stuff, and it's, yeah. yeah, legit. So, move on to Mike and his house segment. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in episode two of this uh, podcast, I thought it was episode I did, one. No, it was episode, episode two. two? Okay. Mm-hmm. I went back and looked. Episode one, I, was, about, bad. Episode one was about him buying a TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, that wasn't good. <laughs> no. First that was few, another stupid The first few purchase. episodes of this, this podcast <laughs> were <right>. terrible. <laughs> got better. So, uh, anyways, in episode two of the podcast, I did a segment. It was called uh, Don't Buy a House, <laughs> where I uh, discussed uh, about... You know, not buying a house and why you shouldn't buy a house. I said that buying a home was a bad idea and such. Well, uh, today, it looks like I'll begin the purchase of a home. I have an offer in, and uh, likely it's going to be accepted. So I'll probably find that out in the next few hours. So you, you can just shit all over me. So if you that. get a call during this podcast and you don't answer to accept it, you just won't get the house? No. No, it's not like... <laughs> Oh, oh, the up. housing market isn't fuck that up. good. <laughs> I really don't mind people buying houses right now. I mean, I have several friends who bought houses recently. More so, the only reason I wouldn't want to buy a house um, you'd be stuck here. is because I'd have to live in Phoenix. And mm-hmm. I don't mind Phoenix that much, but I definitely don't want to live here my entire life. I can't even understand you wanting to. It blows my mind, actually. But. Oh, I like Phoenix. Well, you know, your job makes a lot of it, too. I mean, I have a really great job, so... I like what I do. I guess, but jobs don't always last forever. You know? Well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, my company's probably going to sell in a few years. But anyways, uh, so you're probably thinking that I'm a flip-flopping asshole, and you certainly are entirely entitled to that view because it's... Uh, I don't understand asshole. the whole thing about flip-flopping. Though. People think it's like a bad thing, but if you change your opinions based on facts, I, they I show think up a, afterwards. I think a lot of times when people flip-flop, it's not... I think it's the best yeah, reason. Well, the yeah, I mean, politicians do it all the time. They gain votes just because that's who. Well, um, yeah. we're not politicians. Well, more yeah. importantly, though, what are your reasons now? Well, I was going to go opinion. into that. Uh, basically, I ha- I still believe in all the variables that were in episode two. The whole housing is an investment. The you know all this shit, the hidden costs, all that. I still believe in that. Mm-hmm. Having increased debt, 
All those things are still bad and the investment part is bullshit. I don't believe in that. Um, but there was one variable I didn't expect. And so about a year and a half ago, I, um, you know, rented a, an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and in Phoenix, uh, rents have gotten completely out of control. They've, yeah. they've gone nuts, well, yeah, especially yeah. in the last like six months. And uh, what's interesting is back in August, uh, I want to be honest, the rents overall in Phoenix, if you count the whole area, have gone down. But the reason why that is, is because the rates have exploded in some locations and yeah, they've gone, imploded. Gone really low in certain areas, right. the shitty areas. Right, the immigrant basically. areas. And the reason why is because less immigrants are coming to our area, which yeah. is uh, because our economy is shit. And uh, they actually would rather stay in Mexico. Um, just think about that. But, uh, <laughs> hey, man, but, there's a lot of fruit there. Yeah, it's true. Friends They're, and family, too. But... Um, you know, the vacancy rates are really high there because there's not people to fill the spots, so the rents are going down. Mm -hmm. um, but in other areas, what's happening is the exact opposite. People lose their houses. Yeah, so in better areas, what's happening is essentially there are a lot of people in this city uh, that are actually making a good income, but can't, for whatever reason, get financed for a home, usually because they've already been through a foreclosure because 70% of the homes in Phoenix are underwater. Their, mm -hmm. their, their equity is shit. Um, so they can't get approved for a purchase of the home. So now there's all these families that want to rent houses. They want to rent houses or apartments in good areas. So even though the housing market has decreased 3% this year, I have some in the show notes, just 3% drop in values, the, uh, the rents have ex just completely gone out of control in a lot of areas. So I'm just going to use my place as an example. So uh, when I purchased it, I did a... a Two-year lease. For your apartment. You for should, apartment, yeah. sorry. And it's 1,100 square feet, so it's a pretty big apartment. And it's in Scottsdale, which is a nicer area. And I did 870 a month. So Two-bedroom. Two-bedroom, right. So I looked at the estimate on what that place would rent for now. And it's 1,100 a month. <laughs> hmm. So it went up 21% in a year and a half. Right. And what's interesting, too, is usually people don't want to let you out of a lease. My... My, sell, my leaseholder, my landlord, is happy to let me out of the lease yeah. as soon as possible. He's like, yeah, just go ahead, get the fuck out of here, because I can make way more money off right. someone else. Well, we were smart enough to re-sign our lease, me and Alex, because we knew... Yeah, you got nailed pretty bad, didn't you? Or eh, it was higher than I wanted to, but... Yeah, they, they, they have gone up, and, you know, it's, it's to the point where it's like, I didn't even... I mean, I like living here. I don't have a problem with the apartment. It's small, but it's not bad. And, and I, like living, nice. I like living with Alex. But most, I mean, the biggest thing is just that, like, try to move. I'm just going to end up spending more money or getting a really, really shitty place. So right. it's like, Renting a house is extremely expensive compared to how much you yeah, pay. I was just about to go into that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So let's say you have a house with a mortgage of about 700 a month, right? That's low. No, it, That's it's normal. not because the interest rates are 3.5% right now. Yeah. I was approved with eighty thousand dollars of debt at a mortgage rate of four point one. That makes no sense. It's retarded. But anyways, that's our market today. Um, so after taxes and insurance and all that shit that you don't pay for in rentals, you're looking at about nine hundred a month for your place in, in Arizona, where we live, and that's a about a hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Okay, if you rented that same home. It's going to cost you at least sixteen hundred, and that's being yeah. generous. You're, you're probably going to pay seventeen hundred mm -hmm. a month. So now you have this choice, and this was my choice. I could either rent with the big pro of having no additional debt. I like that. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want debt. I hate debt. Or I could buy a home and have, even with maintenance costs, probably an additional six hundred dollars a month in disposable income. Well, what about just getting an apartment again? Apartment, I don't really want to get an apartment again because there's a lot of things I would like to do, like green screen and stuff like that. We need more space. Ping pong, I think, is a big one. I won't <laughs> be able to do ping pong in the new place, probably, unless we did it outside. But um, <laughs> the one Did you just made a is, mistake here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, apartments are still, I mean, look, look it's 1100 a month for my apartment. Right. And I, I would want something a little nicer than that apartment because that apartment, it's big, but it's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, 
The so, part, that apartment's not that great. It gets yeah. hot in there in the summertime. <laughs> yes, it does. And also, yeah, it has poor insulation. Has, uh, de- the AC's bad. But anyways, uh, so, you know, even considering all the hidden costs and all that stuff, um, and, you know, with the down payment, I have to do 5% down. So that's, that's around $8,000. It's right. a lot of money. But if I'm looking, even conservatively, I will make that up in a year and a half. Just from the difference in costs. But you also have to realize that like when renting a home, most There's a lot of extra lease, costs. Well, it, I was saying house. in renting a house, like if something breaks, it's normally the landlord's fault to fix it and stuff. Right. Now, I bought a house that doesn't need a lot of work at okay. all. That, and but that even was like delivered. appliances and stuff, I mean. Right. Um, well, I, I, I gonna, bought to buy a fridge. You're going to be surprised by the amount of money you have to put into a house, even if it's like in perfect shape. You're probably right. going to end up investing a lot more than you think. Yeah, I, my my wife, she uh, she's definitely already like, oh, I want to do this and that. And I'm like, yeah. no, we're not doing anything at all. Well, you probably will, regardless of what you <laughs> Well, pay. she can pay for it then, because I'm not <laughs> fucking paying for it. <laughs> I think I think you'll eat those words. I'm just saying. I, I really, you know, I'm not someone who's real picky about where I live. So it's just, is it big? Is there stuff not broken? It has a new roof. So that's like one of the few Will things. Will you get shot going outside? What's that? Will you get shot when you're outside? No, no, I'm in a nice part of town. So oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm paying for it though. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it's extremely frustrating though because you think with the declining prices, rent would do the same, but it's not happening in Phoenix. It's not happening anywhere. Washington D.C. Their housing prices are going down. The rentals have gone up twenty two percent. People don't want to live in Washington D.C. Well, actually, Washington D.C. has a very low unemployment rate comparably to everyone else, and the yeah, reason but why the city is because has massive crime problems. Oh yeah, isn't totally. It? Yep, it's a terrible city. Yeah, criminals. Mm-hmm. That's still a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But that yeah, true. it's but that was in two thousand nine too. It went up t- from two thousand eight to two thousand nine twenty two percent. So it's probably even worse now, just mm-hmm. judging on what's happened. But. Anyways, uh, let me say this again. I'm not happy about buying a house. Uh, You've made a great investment. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, well, I don't know. Do you want to finish up? I just have a question. Oh, yeah. No, no. Go ahead. Well, the question I have, I guess, is, you know, you've mentioned before you have a, lo- a huge amount of debt. And don't you worry about buying a house with that debt over your head, especially with the, with the economy so shitty? Because like, like I said mm-hmm. before, I'm That's not saying, I mean, your, your job's a good job. And I have no doubt that you're, you're going to stay there for a while at least. But, you know, I mean, with the amount of debt you have, don't you worry that w- what if something does happen with your job? What do you do? Uh, I would probably have to rent my home and live in a one-bedroom apartment or something. <laughs> um, now, he- here's the thing. This is the other thing I looked at, too. Because a lot of people go, oh, if I get in trouble, I can just rent it. And then they live in a place where they could never rent their home. Right now, homes are renting in about five days in Scottsdale. So they, when they go up, they go up and they, they rent out instantly. Wow. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's really gotten nuts and I don't know why. I just think there's so many people that can't get financed cause they, they got foreclosed on. So they yeah. can't buy for, I think it's seven years. So, yeah. so they have these families that want to live in a home. And so they, the they just, other, I mean, I, I totally uh, understand your reasoning for wanting to buy instead of rent. That, that makes sense to me. I mean, um, my uh, my girlfriend, you guys know this already. Mm-hmm. I'll hit the... oh, I get it. Um, she and her dad live in uh, Phoenix, but re- just recently they had to move there because um, their landlord basically just went, "Hey, uh, I want to live in that house now because I don't have wherever I'm living or whatever. I don't know what their reason was, but they basically mm-hmm. went, "I'm going to move into that house. So you guys got to be out by the end of the month." And they told her, <laughs> they told them this. On like the tenth of the month. That's such a dick move. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, it might not have been the tenth, but it was like, it was after the first. Right. But they gave them less than a month's notice to get, and they're in a house with a stuff. lot of stuff in there. Mm-hmm. They have to move all their shit across yeah, move, town. Moving out of an apartment is nothing compared to a fucking house. Oh, it's so yeah. much worse. Yeah, they had Way to. Worse. Of, of course, uh, you know, he makes decent money, so he was able to get movers. He didn't have to do it himself, which is, you know. A lot better, but still at the same time, it's like they had to find a new house to rent within a month. Because that's that's the main one reason that I wouldn't mind owning a home is just because you wouldn't have to deal with landlords. Because I hate landlords. Yeah, landlord. And yeah, but then you have to deal with HOA though. 
Well, yeah, I but, don't have an HOA. but if you, you're awesome. No. Yeah, a lot of places, in, a lot of places don't town, have no. them. And if you rent a house, you have to deal with landlord and HOA. <laughs> so, yeah, it's you know, I'm like I said, I'm not happy buying a house. And the worst thing is that a bunch of people have given me worlds of shit about this. They've been saying people at work mostly saying saying things like, "Oh, so you're finally not going to throw your money away in rent." And basically things about like how I've become enlightened on the good investment of purchasing a home. I I don't think it's an investment. Do you I'm tell doing, them that? Yes. And they still don't believe me. They think I'm like just guarding myself. And they're like, well, you'll see. They think I'll like see the light years from now. Maybe I will. Maybe the market will just explode. Well, right? as you get older and become more conservative and hate everyone. Well, it does um, feel good that your money is actually going to something you own rather than just going. Yeah, but for the first four years, it's going to, it's going to something interest. he owns that can violently change in you know value over time. Well, it's already right. pretty shitty right now. So it it is actually this this month it looks like it's actually going to go up in that area. Now overall, it's going to decline. Right? Well, the so, fact but, is though, the fact is though that in the coming years, it's going to get better. It has right. to because it can't get much worse than it has been for the past five, ten years. Well, really five years, but. I mean, when it's at its bottom, it can't go down any further. So it's, I mean, this is really not a bad time to buy a house. It, it's really fucked up, too, because I'm sitting there and, you know, I'm going to, if if this deal goes through, I'm going to have to lock my rate in the next week or two. And I'm just watching the euro and I'm kind of like, you know, fucked up way hoping the euro just, just tanks. Because it's interesting, the euro really dictates the mortgage rates because the Europe invests in our housing market yeah so if their euro is worse than the, the market does worse and i'm just kind of sitting there like like i i actually like smile and laugh when the euro does worse i'm like a horrible <laughs> person I'm like like hey, hey yeah they're yeah they're totally screwed fuck those billions of people yeah <laughs> i want my house to be cheap yeah i want my house to be cheap <laughs> but yeah uh, anyways uh i'm looking forward to my 30-year fixed mortgage by the way, for the first four or five years, you just pay interest. So, yeah. and I'm I'm doing a fixed rate. I thought but, they changed that so you had to pay the principal first instead of the interest. No, they're all structured in a way where they make the most money possible in thirty years. Oh, okay. I thought that was changed. That's depressing. No, it didn't. Didn't for change. Mm. Maybe Does I'm thinking it, of student loans or something. No, it did not change with student loans either. They do mm-hmm. it the same way. That's why I you always that. want to pay your principal first because they'll they'll accrue the interest more at the beginning so that the debt gets bigger. All Sorry. Right. <laughs> shit. I don't give a fuck about that. Come on. Let's All right, go. So let's talk about more important things like video let's, games. Let's talk about how House is getting canceled, probably. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine too. So I forgot to mention at the beginning that we're going to bring back Teach Me next week. And Ryan is going to teach us about, now that's what I call music. That's going to oh. be an awesome one. I'm excited to learn about now. That's what he, I call he music. He owns a Now CD. I do. So <laughs> send in your Now That's What I Call Music. How many music of us questions. own one of those? No. One. I, Ryan. The, wow, okay. It was a gift. Why would I? <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's, gift. that's what happens though. Like some aunt bought, because I know a lot of people who like an aunt bought them a now CD. He's just like, oh, well. Well, his was a joke gift. Yeah, mine was a joke gift oh, actually for okay. me. And so. We're going to need stats on this stuff, Ryan. So Yeah. yeah. yeah sure. I'll bring in the CD so we can play some of the great music. Oh, that's one of the worst ones. Fergalicious is on it, I think. Yes, right? it is. Well, that's like, that would probably be like 22 or 23, something. 23, I think. It's 24. Oh, so. man, I was so close. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Damn. <laughs> All right, so it's like three a year. We had a uh, we did a webathon for New Year's Day. For those that haven't seen any of it, you can go, go to, to our, Twitch, our TV. Twitch TV link. I'll have it end of yeah. the podcast. Um, so pretty much what we did was we did a live stream for nine hours straight of us just doing <sighs> things, playing games, mm-hmm. watching shows, interviewing characters, drinking, eating, <laughs> eating stuff. So we kind of want to do a recap of it and like you know tell us tell you guys behind the scenes and the aftermath of it all and what right. we thought of it. So, first of all, thank Ryan a lot for setting all this stuff up. Yeah, uh, yeah, did a lot of work on all of Yeah, it. he worked hard. He did all the Twitch TV stuff. He did all the live stream stuff. He set up all the, you know, the, the cable and all and stuff. And stuff. And the, yeah. He's definitely the most uh, technical out of us in terms of, like, the video and audio shit. He, except for editing um, and, like, film stuff. I'm getting stuff. better. But, um, yeah. He does a lot of that stuff. So I gotta say, uh, off the bat, thanks to Adobe and their Premiere products <laughs> that uh, commercially had for Bandung's Greatest Hits. I'm not exaggerating when it say that it crashed over 200 times when I was making that video. You know, I know I edited a feature in Final Cut Pro and it crashed maybe eight. <laughs> a yeah. feature film. Yeah. 
Well, yours is a three minute commercial. <laughs> three minute commercial. It's <laughs> the power so of, of those commercials. Let's talk about those. So, yeah, yeah. That commercial was originally your idea, right? Yeah, yeah I, it was. After we did that, uh, the NES Van Dunk's greatest. Yeah, we one. did that during like one of those grab bags or whatever. I thought it'd be funny to actually make oh, one of yeah. those commercials. Sometimes Mike just makes random sounds. So, yeah. yeah. So the original idea was just to do a commercial, but the intro was way crazier than we ever thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was kind of like us in a room going, what no, make it all more this. awkward, make it more awkward. Yeah. yeah. The funniest one that Ryan did not put in there was when he says radical, there was another one where he went crazy on the couch, and it was so fucking funny, but he didn't put it in there. Yeah. He was the yeah. less crazy one. <laughs> it's a radical transition to better, but... Yeah. But uh, yeah, then we also had those uh, other commercials... Like the Zoloft and the yeah. virtual Yeah, Mike went and found dumb commercials that mean him just, just voiceovers randomly. Wasn't the math commercial just the real yeah, was just yeah. the math That was the real commercial. Yeah, well, we, me and Mike watched them all first, and then we're like, we should just leave this one. It's yeah, funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, that, one, that one's amazing. I, that, that's why I don't get about that commercial, because me, me and uh, Bianca were talking about it. That does not make anyone not want to use meth. That commercial, yeah, it's like, kind of weird. It makes you feel like you want to do meth. You're they like, do like this flashes is of bad stuff in there, but for well, the most yeah, part, well, it's positive. The stuff she's doing is usually bad, but it's still like it doesn't make meth seem bad at all, though. Like the way it's portrayed is oh, it's so stupid. So another thing is, uh, I was the first one to go down in this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you Did, were, you, went, you went from like okay to dead within well, half what, an hour. What happened was. Everyone was buying me shots, and then I think you said something, and then everyone started buying you shots. They bought me like two more, but still, yeah, I went down pretty quick. That I bought Kevin the cake vodka for Christmas as a joke, and then we decided to save that for the webathon. That was a bad idea. Dude, that cake and I don't think I want to so eat cake ever again. I actually, uh, <laughs> I that was pretty much what I did shots of the whole night. It was cake really? vodka. And I, I switched over to my bourbon. I didn't, I didn't do stand it. that shit. I didn't have to drink quite as much as you guys, but I drink quite a bit, and I don't know. I just. Yeah. yeah, fine. Well, that's good because if you two did went, our <laughs> yeah. way, here's the thing: I had two beers that weren't purchased. Just yeah, two. but that was your fault. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that I had two, and then the rest was all purchased. I must have had like, I think I, I, I mean, I got a lot of shit bought for me. I mean, I must have had like ten or twelve shots. Yeah, yeah you drink a lot. Yeah, when it comes to straight up liquor, I don't have nearly as strong a stomach as these guys, so I was puking a bit. Laying on the floor for me. Yeah, well, then you also had to do all that food shit. I'm fine with liquor as long as I uh, we'll talk don't about that too. drink beer in unison with drinking. Yeah, it's bad to drink in unison, but like once I picked it all up, I was fine. I was like, all right, I'm back. See, I drink, I drink <laughs> those beers really early on because like, part of me was like, well, not that many people are going to buy shots. And then I had four lined up like within like the first hour or so, and I was well, like, oh, shit. Let's discuss a little bit what... Uh, our preconceived notions were of the webathon because because we especially you Alex we had disagreements on how much we thought people were going to give us because I said that like you said the amounts were way too high that they had to pay for different yeah, originally things. we had fifty dollars for one person to get a shot and it was like seventy five for everyone and we dropped it down which I think that was that a good idea to drop good it idea. down well but, not for us but but I think <laughs> but I also think that. Uh, I was right on a lot of them, which is that people yeah. will pay a lot of money to see yeah, you do people. something well, really stupid. One of the reasons I thought that is most of our viewers are, you know, like college kids or young people, and they don't really have that much money to just freely give away. That's true. So, I guess some of them do, though. Apparently, so. yeah, they must it, have some disposable it, income. Speaking about giving away money, Mike, you should talk about your pizza. Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess I, I found out about that afterwards because I was pretty much. Oh, so uh, we ordered pizza about halfway through. Actually, Ellie ordered the pizza halfway through. And I guess you put a tip on the card. Was nice. The pizza came out to like 40 bucks or something. We mm-hmm. got like three with a lot of toppings on it. I was sad that I was passed out for that because I want to mess with that pizza guy so bad. Yeah. But, I was just, but anyway, yeah. we ended up spending like 40 bucks plus like, you know, a good tip on the pizza. So the guy comes up to the door and I guess Mike in his drunken haze decided he also needed to tip the pizza guy right. for 20 bucks. So this guy walked out with like 25, 30 bucks on a $40 <laughs> yeah. pizza. That's pretty awesome. And I, I also heard that he was basically pushed out. Like, he didn't really get into the show that much. Or was yeah, that I, wanted to, I wanted to bring him in. I would be like, hey, here's a $20 tip if you come in here and you yeah. do some things. Well, well that was my we original gonna, idea, but I was... I was we were going to invite him in, but you guys were, we guys, you were like dead, and he was being a pain in the ass, so we were just like, right. I don't even want to fuck around with this. Yeah. Let's just fucking get the pizza and eat it, because yeah. I was hungry. Well, so. on, the, on the other side of the pizza, you did confuse the shit out of someone in North Dakota, which was pretty good. That oh, was yeah. great. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I didn't hear that. I watched it after when he did the genius voice. That was pretty funny. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty funny, yeah. Yeah, the guy I called, the guy paid for me to call, he wouldn't talk at all. I was kind of sad. 
Well, yeah. well, you may have been right about the donations, Benson, but you weren't right about the dancing because you're like, I think this is a stupid idea, oh, yeah. and I thought, well, it was, was a stupid idea. Well, yes, I <laughs> well, knew. People I love that though. It was funny. I did think it was dumb, so I was wrong about that. I guess people wanted to see us dance for some reason. Dude, those there's, there's something so, very shameful about it. Like just yeah. like just the it's like the ultimate kind of level of shilling. Well, it's like it's basically. A, 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 aside from being naked, it's like a step up from stripping, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Except you actually make less. Yeah. <laughs> so. We didn't get to no play dignity. all the games that we wanted to, too. Yeah, we wanted to play Pac-Man versus. Yeah, we didn't get to that. We didn't get to uh, Kerbal Space Program. Well, I think one thing that we've discussed outside of this is that um, we want to start doing regular streams yeah. um, in the near future. And so a lot of the stuff we didn't play during it... Um, we can just play on a stream. Yeah, you got a lot of donations for free games, right, Ryan? Um, yeah, a lot of people gifted me some pretty dumb Steam games. I got, like, Pets Horses and, like, Baseball Manager. <laughs> Someone did give me Gary's Mod, which I've always wanted, so oh, thank you for cool. that. Gary's Mod's pretty awesome. I'm probably forgetting some others. I think I got The Ship. I never played that. Yeah, that game's cool. Um, there's something else. Oh, there's some anime store game or something. It looks one, pretty anime. One thing I guess we should uh, ask our listeners is uh, when would be the best night to do a weekly stream or something right um, because i don't know uh you know i i know that for us certain nights are easier or whatever but i don't know what nights most people want to watch something well the, like the that. two well the three ideas we came up with was, was friday night well friday night and this is all phoenix time so friday night around i don't know six or seven maybe which would be which is good because i mean we don't do anything on friday night yeah but that's losers. my least favorite one actually yeah i don't want to do saturday s- day is my yeah favorite saturday one. day yeah. or sunday day would work too I like Saturday, too, yeah. The, uh, the better thing about doing it Saturday or Sunday during the day would be that uh, people in Europe could see it easier. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because I guess we have a lot of European fans. I didn't even know that. Yes. yes. Yeah, like, we do. Reading, reading the thread and hearing when they stayed up till it's like, man, there's some fucked up times. There's here. a lot of yeah. people from UK and stuff like that, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. I wish I hadn't gotten so drunk. Uh, but yeah, that was kind well, of what happened was at the beginning, everyone all started donating that one that knew they were going to donate anyway, probably. Yeah. So then we just had like a massive count of shots coming up and it was like, oh man. And then yeah. I, and then one of my shots, the worm fell out in. And I, I was yeah. just happy. I came back to near the end, like last hour, I kind of just woke up and I was like, whoa, this is still, still going, going on. on here. <laughs> yeah. It's all like, I better get to work. Yeah, yeah, you did pass I'm, out. I missed the Legends of the Hidden Temple part. It was kind of sad. I, I caught like that the one. very end of that or Wishbone. I can't remember. I caught the very end of one of them. Wishbone wasn't nearly as funny. We should have used Thunderbirds, which was our other idea. Yeah. No. I got shot down before the thing, but then you guys were both out of commission anyway. So <laughs> <Yeah>. we <wouldn't have laughs> um, But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I had a fun time doing it. I think that, uh, I mean, we made a good amount of money from doing it, which as we've said before, just goes back into our content. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't take any of the money that are don't that's donated to the Yeah, company. we're gonna buy lighting and we're gonna buy um, maybe even a new editing rig for so we can never use Premiere ever again. <laughs> that's the so goal. That'd be good. Um, oh so yeah, yeah. Um, people have asked about the food segment thing. I felt perfectly fine the next day. That didn't bother me at all. Really? Yeah, I saw, he was I fine. saw commercials for like alcohol and stuff, and I was grossed out. But food, that stuff didn't. You still have like know. two sticks of Cisco or whatever that fucking Frisco. 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 Cisco. Cisco. Yeah. Cisco switches. Yeah. Yeah. Cisco switches in Thong my uh, fridge. Yeah. The uh, also my apartment still smells like sardines. Oh, great. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, that last one with the cheese whiz and all that other stuff was that was rough. That one was really hard. I, I thought the hardest part actually would be the clothes. The cloves? Yeah. Well, yeah, the problem was I had to... They're, they're like, spiky and they're also just, full. This thing like right now is kind of gross, but I could like slurp down the cheese whiz and the tuna, but I had to chew the cloves. Oh! So it was like... Yeah, like a gross. finish. Yeah, with the green chili uh, and uh, sriracha in there. I was like, oh, It was pretty gross, but... I, he, he there was, was no there was no after effects of it at all. He was fine, really? yeah. He woke... I got up the next day, and when he got up, I was like, how are you feeling? He's like... Well, the only one I thought yeah. there would be after effects from was the lard... Ranch and butter. Yeah, that, that is would, not. That would make me yeah. sick. <laughs> that's that's a that makes you poop. <laughs> that would make me really sick. But I had the Pepto Bismol right after, so. Was, yeah. Um, Jesus, god damn. Well, we came out all the better for it, and I still have a jug of clamato in my fridge, so that's good, <laughs> I guess. 
I'm trying to find something that I can use it as an ingredient for, but there's nothing that sounds um, good. I got garbage disposal. Oh, uh, yeah. I, was about to say. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like throwing out food unless it's like Clubato. just completely <laughs> unusable in anything. Uh, you'd be surprised what gross things can go into good foods. Yeah, that's true. Clamato could be used for Yeah, there's a lot of things that it would thing. work for. Yeah. Maybe like Manhattan clam chowder. I could try that. I'll look, I'll look up some Clamato recipes. Send in your Clamato recipes. Yeah, I'm going to get a bunch of them. They're all disgusting. You get one from Thomas Keller. You're like, what? Hmm. I didn't know he was a listener. So, uh, I He's guess... not. <laughs> no. I guess we're moving on then to your thing, Kevin? I guess so. We're way... Under. Yeah, it's only it's only halfway through right now. Um, that's okay. This segment will take a little bit, so it's fine. So, I'm going to talk about uh, when good directors go bad. Um, meaning that... Even even the greatest directors, um, the Blair most Rose. famous greatest directors, have movies or make movies that are not good. I thought you were going to talk about like Polanski, like when he starts raping people and stuff. No, <laughs> no, not uh, not that. Good directors going bad. That's that's directors no, going bad. That gets wild. you that gets you rewards in France, <laughs> Los Angeles, California. This director, this um, scumbag. Though I didn't put Polanski on the list, though he actually. He has a lot of bad movies. He does. He has some really good movies, too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to talk about a few of them that I thought of, and I know that you guys have some. I talked to Mike. Um, I'm not taking yours. The ones that you listed, I right. just wrote separately. I instantly so. thought of one, too. Yeah, he has one, too. Um, so I want to talk about great directors who have either fallen into a rut of making bad movies, have decreased in quality their movies gradually until they're not good anymore or who just happen to have a couple movies in the middle that aren't very good for some reason and then we can you know maybe talk about them and or discuss why they're bad um, as opposed to just saying yeah movie sucks so of course m my favorite uh director directors i guess are the coen brothers i've always loved the coen brothers and uh now, they made Intolerable Cruelty, which I, uh, I'm not a huge fan of, but it's not that bad. Um, that stars, of course, uh, George Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine um, <laughs> Zeta-Jones. That movie, I'm, you know, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's kind of just like... Boring. I, I never say, saw that one. I'd say it's, the writing in it is witty, but yeah, like just you don't really care that much about is the Is that the one where they're in like a skyscraper and she has to go under lasers or something? No. No, you're thinking... God damn it. <laughs> I made that joke. Yeah, he already made the same joke. <laughs> Shut up. Not um, paying attention. But the problem is the Coen brothers made Lady Killers. You ever see the Lady Killers? Oh, I've yeah. seen the Lady Killers. I have seen the Lady That movie is terrible. That movie sucks. It's not good at all. It's not and, that good. And, and there's... I don't understand where that movie came from. What's weird about that movie is their movies can be goofy or whatever, but they're never, like, real goofy. Like, that movie's... Well, it depends on the way you mean. Like, it's goofy. They're goofy in a certain style. Well, Raising that... Arizona is pretty fucking goofy, and so is yeah. Hudsucker Proxy. I mean, those are goofy movies. But Lady Killers is, like, the character looks goofy. I think it's a big, like... He you looks know, cartoonish. Here's how, they act cartoonish. It's like a character bit movie, too. Yeah. Which they don't really... Sometimes they do... I mean, they focus on characters a lot, but it's like, oh, look at this guy, and this guy, and this guy. So. Yeah. Lady Killers, to me, feels like a movie where it's like that another director did like a comedy romp, but it's like written slightly better, and that's right. it. It's just like a really bad, like... I don't know. It's just, it's kind of a typical idea. that People have do that movie all the time where someone tries to like... Get money by killing an old person. What, what's weird like that. about that like, movie is it does not feel like a Coen Brothers movie to not me. Not at all. Like not it, at all. It feels like it feels like the people who made House Arrest <laughs> made that movie. Like yeah, I, I kinda, it, it feels true. <laughs> that movie sucks. Lady Killers <laughs> is not a good movie. So Shooter McGavin. But let's let's move on to <laughs> someone who people don't know as well. Um, uh, I was talking to, to uh, Mike about this earlier. Uh, Neil LeBeau, yeah. who I personally am, am, am a fan of. I actually, I mean, he's made three movies that I consider very good movies. Um, in the Company of Men, which is probably, awesome. in my opinion, awesome. one of the best low-budget movies ever made. That movie is amazing. Um, he made uh, Your Friends and Neighbors uh, right after that one. And that, that movie's good. And then he also made The Shape of Things, which was a lot later. That's like in 2003. Right. Um, 
Did which he make I also uh, liked. Nurse Betty? Yes, he did, and I've never seen Nurse Betty. It's okay. Yeah, I've I've heard it's all right, and and you know Z- apparently Zellweger was really good in it, is what I read. But um, but then, <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I can tell you what happened to Neil LeBeau. He started getting money. That's what happened to Neil LeBeau because he he made the American remake of The Wicker Man. Oh. Yeah, this it, is this is the same guy. Who made, I didn't know that was this is the same guy who made was, in the company of men. Like wow, made the Wicker Man. I have to be honest here. I enjoyed the remake of Wicker Man more than in the company of men. Well, I did not then like in the you're company a retard. Of men. Then sorry. Um, well, and sorry, then, Nick Cage is great in that movie. <laughs> sorry, the Wicker Man's really funny to watch. But if you didn't like in the company of men, then to me, your taste is not is irrelevant to me. Yeah, exactly. You thought it was boring, which means well, that what, I'll just Man, never agree with you on that, ever. Now, in his defense, Wicker Man is kind of a... The original was very schlocky and ridiculous anyways, and he was trying yes. to make... He was almost trying to make a campy film. It, yeah, but he didn't. Dude, the bear He just made a bad someone. film with, with a lot of funny, <laughs> stupid shit, yeah. but it wasn't... That movie's too... I don't... But, like, like, he terrible. thinks it's a comedy. Like, like he... I think it's a comedy. <laughs> like, so he made a movie that that seems like it's just a bad. Okay, movie. well, let's step back a minute. Then he also made uh, Lakeview Terrace. That movie. Where's your excuse for that? I there is that. none. That's just a, a <laughs> mediocre. Sam Jackson the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both those movies are bad. But... Well, they're terrible. But the th- here's the thing, though. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do. This is the this is the guy who made in the Company of Men. He made the Shape of Things. These are very character driven. Like very dialogue driven movies. What about um, Wicker Man? He says he's a policeman. Yeah, I'm a police <laughs> officer. <laughs> this is my badge. This is my badge. Yes, it's character development. I I know the <laughs> lines from Wicker Man. Thanks. Um, but it just I I think I really think it just has to do with the fact he started making money. Well, I, I don't know what else it could be. After Wicker Man, he was in a lot of trouble because he went way over budget and he lost them a lot of money on that movie, and so. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> and, and it was a critical flop. So, like, everything that could have went wrong went wrong with that movie. So, he had to probably take whatever project he could get. And so, Lakeview Terrace, he didn't write Lakeview Terrace. No. So, he just took that. He well, had to. Well, that's the thing, too, though. He didn't write Wicker Man, either. No, he didn't. And uh, he did write the other three movies. Yes. There, in fact, uh, except for uh, company, in Sephiroth and the Company of Men, um, the other two that... The other two ones that I mentioned, um, he those are both based on plays of his. So he wrote plays of those before, which is why they're so dialogue driven. Um, whereas in the Company of Men is like that because it's cheap to do that. That's why. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I I really think that it's a money situation. But he hasn't made anything good since. Since in the since the shape of things, there's nothing nothing. Well, he should be able to now because he probably made some money off Lakeview Terrace. I think yeah, that movie money. It made some money. Your movie has Sam Jackson as the main character. <laughs> yeah, to make unless money. it's Shaft. So or uh, snakes on a plane. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Quentin money. Tarantino. Um, he's made some good movies. Yep, and he also made Death Proof. Yeah, Death Proof and Jackie I fucking... Brown. Hate Death Proof. Death Proof is bad. Jackie Brown sucks too, but it's not on the same I'm, level I'm say of this, suck as Death Proof. I'm going to say this about Death Proof. Death Proof feels like a movie that was made by some kid who really likes Quentin Tarantino. That's in film school, and you watch his and short films, and they're not. Yeah, and he's <laughs> not very good. And then you gave him twenty million dollars to make a movie. And they go, D- just make so whatever you want. Quentin Here's Tarantino. the director of photography. <laughs> yeah. Here's the director of photography. Here's a crew. Make a $20 million movie. And then he's like, okay, cool. All right. So car, this is going to be a 30-minute car chase at the end. And we're going to have talks about vaginas with these four women. And we get women that have never acted before. Yeah. But they're stunt actors. Yeah, they're stunt actors. One of them was or something like that. <laughs> the acting in that movie is dude i some of the I'm, worst I'm actually acting pretty big fan of tarantino but that movie is fucking god awful it's it's really like bad. the robert rodriguez one the other one that goes with it it's like a thousand times better. Th- and that yeah. movie's like okay how yeah. did you feel about uh, jackie brown i actually never saw jackie brown. jackie saw. brown i think is way too long it is i guess so i just feel like it's when mediocre. i when i watched jackie brown the way i felt about it was that it felt like he was trying to do that Pulp Fiction feel again, except 
um, with more of like a black exploitation kind of thing mm -hmm. going on. But just everything wasn't done very well. Like yeah. nothing was done particularly well. Like in Pulp Fiction, where nearly everything is I, very unique and and well made. I, I just think Jackie I, Brown. Like I think the acting's really excellent in that movie. I think oh that, the acting's fine. The, I think the problem with that movie is just the plot gets away from it. The plot gets way too convoluted and dumb. It does. That's true. Brown paper bags. Death proof is so bad. <laughs> that, yeah, death proof. Death proof sucks ass. Some of these. How long is this car chasing going on? How long am I watching this girl no, in the, front of the car? I was happy. I was happy because no one was acting. Because the second Rosario Dawson opened her mouth, I was like, "Holy shit! Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> really? So bad yeah. in this movie. You you hate Rosario Dawson. So. Well, she's awful in that movie too. I yeah, she is. She's she gets she's, outacted by stunt women. She's bad in several <laughs> movies. Actually. Oh yeah. Uh, um, so uh, let's move it right along to uh, Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> there, there's <laughs> one on. movie the, 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 who made so, oh. The Fountain, oh. which is just, I mean, he made Pi, which I love. I he pie. made The Wrestler, which I love even more than Pi. Um, Black Swan's great. He made Black Swan, which I thought, I thought Black Swan was Oscar worthy. I, I loved that film. And so, I mean, this guy... He can make movies. He's a great filmmaker. But, again, I think it's a money Dude. thing. He got a lot of money, and he's like, I'm going to make something big. That movie's but it, so bad. It, you that, know, movie's bad. that movie's bad. You one like of the most, slow motion? Holy shit, that man. Hey, I like Lava Lamps. Most, uh, <laughs> pretentious, just like... Is anything going to happen in this movie? It, that movie is the definition of clusterfuck, where you're just like... The movie is so it, overly complex you know, and like just weird that... He couldn't even figure out how to make it fit together. You know what so that movie feels like, like? It feels like when you watch a movie and you take a, and you fall asleep for like twenty minutes in the middle of it and you wake back up again. That's what that movie feels like. <laughs> yeah. And then do like, that eight times during yeah. the movie somehow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I just want to say there's no better way to state it. In People magazine, the year that movie came out, they were asking actors what their favorite movies of the year were, and Mike Myers said, "The Fountain is my favorite <laughs> movie of the year. It really makes you think." So if Mike Myers <laughs> thinks something is the best movie of the year, you instantly know it's not a good movie. So yeah, there that's, go. that's a very good chance of that, yeah. <laughs> um, that movie just sucks. But, but, you know, the thing that's amazing about The Fountain is that everything is done wrong except for the visuals. Like, the visuals the are, are fantastic in that movie. And then everything else so is They're so empty, awful. though. Like, the visuals oh. are... It's macro good looking, I have but, to completely disagree with you. Well, on they're that. good looking, but I'm saying that they have no meaning behind them. They're just like whatever. They're just pretentious crap. Well, there's a the, there's a strong theme in that movie. I, I think the movie doesn't really uh, know what it is, though. That's the problem. Like, yeah. it, but more more so, just that movie just sucks, though. You can't don't know what's going on ever. It's too that, insane. That movie feels like he when he was writing it, he ran into a problem, and then he went. How do I fix this problem? Okay, let's make up something else. Okay, now I have another different problem. Okay, let's just make up something else too. Okay, now we're gonna have some guy in the future and the past because I can't explain this. Okay, now and then. All right, all right. Yeah. Then so just, uh, yeah. we also have uh, our good friend, uh, who who Mike and I are, are fairly decent fans of, um, mm -hmm. Lars von Trier. Yeah. Uh, which I'm not even gonna list the bad movies because, as Mike said earlier. It's basically just the last 10 years. And yeah. I, think, I mean, Antichrist was a little <laughs> uh, little bit um, gross. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I got to say, I, I actually liked some parts of Antichrist, and I think oh, the I acting was fantastic. Yep. The acting was incredible. Uh, the acting was good. I thought the art direction was good. I thought that the idea was good. It's just not a good movie. It, it went. It, <laughs> it feels like it was like a shock value thing, just like... I don't know. I, I will say this to anybody. If you say no movie can gross me out, watch that movie. Because I think it will. Well, even even if, if it won't, then I don't think anything could. Because that's, I mean, yeah. that's got some of the grossest stuff I've ever seen it, in a movie. Oh, my God. And then we'll just move on because um, we're, getting, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's talk about uh, the penultimate one. The best example is Sir Stanley Kubrick, who made See, I never saw that movie. incredible films his entire life and then made Eyes Wide Shut. I never saw that. <laughs> um, Eyes like Wide Shut. It's like it's a movie I've never seen. 
Well, you guys always say it's so bad. I'm like, okay, I'll just. I, you should see it sometime. I think I think it's something where you kind of should just to understand what's why it's so not Kubrick. Like, I don't understand why that movie is so bad. It's just it's like everything that in movie's it's not, that movie's in, really frustrating too because the first half hour of it, you're like, man, this isn't going anywhere, and then it yeah. starts to build up, and you're like, whoa, some crazy shit's gonna happen here. And then nothing happens. And you're like, you fucking asshole. You wasted two and a half hours of my time. <laughs> now, uh, as we were discussing earlier, Kubrick also, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, he was the co- he created the concept behind uh, AI, the movie AI. But he uh-huh. died before he could develop it. And Spielberg wrote the script. Um, so Spielberg took that idea Spielberg from Spielberg wrote that script? I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Spielberg wrote AI. That movie's not good. Um, no, it's not. But it's funny because... I've I've heard people and you did a little bit too this morning even I've heard people blame him for AI but yeah. he had nothing to do with that movie at all. I don't think he could have made AI good. I just don't. Just, uh, I disagree. It would have been I like 2001 than the way yeah, Spielberg did it. So. I gotta disagree because he didn't even write the script yet. Right, that's true. That, it would have been complete. It's just a concept to him at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, th- that I think he's the best example though because Eyes Wide Shut is just such a bad movie and it's yeah, like. It is. This is the guy who made 2001. This is the guy who made A Clockwork Orange. I mean, yeah. it's unbelievable. And so, you have a couple that you were... Uh, well, the big one I wanted to say was Thomas Vinterberg, because he made Celebration, which is an awesome movie. Yeah, that's and one of my favorites. And then he never made a good movie ever again. Yeah. That was his first movie, and his first film was this very immediate, intimate, rough movie and then all his other movies were pretentious and overblown pieces of shit. Have I ever told it's you the totally story insane. about how he uh, he called up uh, Ingmar Bergman um, to ask him for help with his second movie because he was like, "I'm I'm out of budget. I'm I'm fucked. I don't know what to do. What am I gonna do?" And Ingmar Bergman told him, "I'm not helping you. You made a masterpiece, and now you're an idiot." That's what he told him. <laughs> That's what Ingmar Bergman to him directly called him an idiot, which is like. Incredible. And the other one I want, I said to you that I would think is a good one is uh, Spike Lee with Summer of Sam. Yes, Su- a Summer of Sam's terrible. Incredibly bad movie. That movie sucks. Yes, um, it was awful. The one I had to talking the, dog. The one I instantly thought of was uh, Francis Ford Coppola directed Jack. Yeah, yeah that yeah. that is That's, a great one. That was like, great. Right. I I laughed. I didn't know that for so long until like I was on IMDb and someone got to Jack and I'm like, wait, does that say Francis Ford Coppola? <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. I had uh, two actually. David Lynch was one of them. I mean, he made uh, Eraserhead and Caps Blue Ribbon. Then he made Dune. It was pretty bad. (laughs) Well, he's he's made uh, some bad movies, though. I think his worst movie is Lost Highway. I don't like Lost Highway. Then the joke one was uh, John Carpenter. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Mike also said uh, David O. Russell. Yeah, Um, for I Heart Huckabees. I Heart Huckabees, which... Yeah, I gotta say, I'm I'm not a fan of I Heart Huckabees, but I don't think that it's as nearly as bad as some of the movies on this list. No, that's, um, that's why I didn't. But but yeah, I mean, th- I think it's just like sometimes good directors like just the project gets away from them, and it's like, well, this thing's shit. I guess I just better put it out and hope <laughs> for the best. See, the worst part is though, once you make one bad movie, like then you can't do the same things that you did before. Yeah, it kind of stains you, too. It kind of stains you a little bit. I think think filmmaking is a lot like cooking, in a way. You know, you see these chefs, and they were, like, really good, but then they have one bad experience, and they lose their confidence. Once they lose their confidence, they can't, like, make good decisions anymore. And, And I think that happens with a lot of directors. They make a bad movie, and then all of a sudden they go... Oh really? Should I do that? Maybe I should. Oh, maybe I could do that actually. And then they they can't make decisions anymore. Why don't we not do uh, Orson Welles? Oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't, you know I didn't even think about Orson Welles. Yeah, but, uh, I was like, what one. the hell? Citizen Kane is great, and then he made shit afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Hey, what about uh, Robert Zemeckis and uh, Mars Needs Moms? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mars Needs hey, Moms. You know what? He's made a lot of bad. I know. That's why I just like that, sir. So still, that becomes um, bad. So, the, I guess the moral of the story is, even if you have a director who you think is God, it doesn't matter. There's still a pretty good chance they have or will make a bad movie. Hey, Bruckheimer still Unless hasn't made I a bad guess movie. Unless, I guess, he's P.T. Anderson, <laughs> who just won't. I don't know. Well, he, he, hasn't could, made, so. he hasn't made a whole lot. He could. He, yeah, well, he, that's the thing. He hasn't made that many movies. Yeah. But every well, that single worked for one Kubrick for a long time, and then he... Blew it at the yeah, I know. Well, how old was he? Like eighty years old. Kubrick, Kubrick is the Seinfeld of directors, where yeah. he just nonstop <laughs> amazing, and then the last thing you do is terrible. You're like, what happened? Really? Yeah, it really did hurt. <laughs> All right, so 
we'll quickly talk about this movie that's coming out this week called Devil Inside Me. It's doing huge numbers. Huge. So is this about so, getting raped by the devil, or is that like a... All I see is on the ads like that we saw euphemism? was like, I saw this girl with her lip cut in a yeah. sign of a cross. Oh! Yeah. And it's like, Scary. the Vatican is never is not allowed to release exorcism video footage or some yes, bullshit. Yeah, I'm sure, yep. That picture's straight up hilarious. And then, uh, I, so I went, to, I the, I went to the mall to get my hair cut where there's an IMAX in Phoenix. I'm sorry. And uh, there was a line for people on like... Because I think it came out on a Wednesday or something. I think it's slated or Thursday. So I was week. I was there at like I was there at like six thirty to get my hair cut, and there's a line for people at that. I'm like, what are you guys here for? Like, oh, devil inside me. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> and so you went home and go, what what am I? What, what are <laughs> what, all these people all what, excited what about? What is this shit? You know what? Fuck everyone that watches horror movies. I don't care. Stop watching them. Stop make. You know what? Even if there's one good one, there's like eighty bad ones. For that one good one, even that's kind of conservative. I know. Well, I'm, I'm being. Extreme. <laughs> it depends on if you mean Hollywood even if, or low budget. Let, let's just say, let's just say that you love horror movies. You can even admit that one out of every ten are tolerable. Or at least well, what good. I can say to you though is that people who love horror movies, you're completely wrong. They will not admit that. Yeah, I they know. They will not admit yeah. that because I know they many have people. Stockholm syndrome. I have known many, many people who love horror Which movies, I saw works and out they so well. <laughs> they refuse to accept that the horror genre is just inundated with terrible films. They do not they're, accept they're, it. They're, 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 the acting in yeah. horror movies is bottom shelf. And, and I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> it's, I'm, it's bad. I am literally, I'm gonna blow your guys' mind here that are listening. If you watch shitty horror movies. They will keep making shitty horror movies. Well, that's what they want. Yeah. Because they like those movies. Because they're cheap yeah. as fuck to make and they make a ton of money. But people... Yeah. Okay, there's a crowd. There's a big crowd that see them because they think they're funny. But there's also a big crowd that sees them because they think they're scary. And those that's a much bigger crowd. And <laughs> yeah, they're well, stupid. Yeah, like, well... They're here's, when's the last time you guys were scared from a movie? I... No, um, Roger Rabbit no when I was like five yeah. years old. No country for old men. When I was ten, I saw fucking uh, what is it called? Full Metal Jacket, where he blows his brains out on the toilet, and I was that scared. part's scary. Well, I was yeah. ten. Oh, so. 10 yeah. <laughs> so. I still think stuff like I, I think parts like that are scary. I mean, I don't get like weep like a girl or something, but I, I get scared at movies. But the thing is, horror movies don't scare me because all they are is just jump scares. There's no atmosphere. Yeah. Well, they don't even do jump scares anymore, really. They just show like. A- they do anti scares. Like they'll yeah. try, they'll build it up, and then nothing will happen. And then bam, it's a scare. Yeah. It's like, oh, come on. They do that a lot. Or yeah. a lot of time they do edit scares, which don't ever. Oh, do so the, the anti- actual movie, movie, the background, the worst, the stuff. worst edit scare I've ever seen in a movie was the remake of The Ring. They would do it between a jump cut of a scene for like a, like two or three frames. They would show the ring between mm-hmm. the jump cut, and it was supposed to be like subliminal, I guess. But like I was like, you're showing the ring. This isn't scary to me. Yeah, it All was right. really dumb. That's enough about that. Let's go on a top. Yeah, five. we're almost out of time. Okay. So, uh, number five, Tiger Woods X shows us how rich she is. Uh, that's the, literally the headline. That was not written From, by uh, me. From what? what uh... Headline news. Oh. Your news source for Good news. News, 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 yeah. So, uh, Ellen Nordig, Grint, some blonde, sweet. Ellen Woods. Whatever. Yeah, Norden Grinking. Or sweet or twat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry for our Swedish viewers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... She Tiger bought a twelve point three million dollar home. This is after the divorce. She bought it. We know. should. This is Tiger Woods X Y. Right. We Tiger already said this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just making sure. So twelve point three million dollar oceanfront mansion she purchased by herself. Where was this? In Florida. Florida. Because there's tax exemptions there. But I'm not gonna say. Shut up. Anyways, uh, <laughs> bought this house, seventeen thousand square feet, eight bathrooms, in ground pool, ele- <laughs> elevator. Elevator. Ah! So what she did is she was going to renovate it. Renovating was just made. Yeah. She was going to renovate it. But then, you know what? It just wasn't working. And they realized, the landscapers and the architects advised her that she should destroy the home. Now, let me just say something. The landscapers. Would you really think, could you trust an architect when you have hundreds of millions of dollars like she does now? And you go, hey, you know, I don't like this room. I don't like this. this you should just tear down the house. You should just tear down the whole the, the thing. Ar- those architects and construction guys are fucking geniuses. Yeah, <laughs> Look how dumb she is. is. They're just, so yeah, she wrecks her $12 million home. Yeah, and she's going to build a $17 million home there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Needs three elevators at least. So basically yeah. on this one house, she's spending over $30 million after everything. Or she could have just bought a house that she liked. Or bought some right. land and put that house there. Yeah. Wouldn't buying a $30 million house be nicer than doing that anyway? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's cool. Let's move on. <laughs> so, uh, 
This is from Gawker, my, my favorite new website. <laughs> Here are some rich New Yorkers whining about feeling poor. So they have this, uh, they have this parenting site called uh, Urban Baby. It's a Ugh, terrible name. That's mm-hmm. awful. But it's a message board, and they had this, they had this uh, question. It said, what's your HHI, which is your household income, and do you feel poor, middle class, upper middle class, or rich where you live? No judging. So there's a lot of people that said, you know, I'm middle class or I'm this or that. And this is actually from the Gothamist that pointed out, but it was easier to read from Gawker. But anyways, these were from the message board, from real people. $700,000 feel poor, New York City. So they're telling where they live. So right. They well, make like, $700,000 a year, they feel poor. I can't imagine what that's like. Yeah. I was telling Mike, it's like, if I had $100,000, the things I could do with $100,000 a year... <laughs> Okay, listen to this. $350,000. Yeah. So, so, so poor. <laughs> Not being dramatic or anything, really poor. We totally struggle every day. We live in the hey. Upper East Side. Obviously, we are totally overextended. If we could get out of this mess, we would, but we can't. They live in the Upper East Side. It's not like the nicest part no, of the yeah. city. So these people are just retards and just bought the most expensive house they could possibly Shut get. No, shut up. They're poor, <laughs> man. They need tax exemptions to help them. Okay, here, here's another one. Uh, Last year, 650K. This year, 375 to 450K, depending on the bonus, if I'm lucky. <laughs> I know, we're actually, we are doing well, <laughs> but we still feel pinched. We try to save our bonus and spend our base, 275000 That's his base salary. And with two, two kids in private preschool, modest, price, modest place far in Upper West Side, and pretty modest life, we rip modest. pretty, pretty mod. I love how they say pretty mod. We rip through that 275K incredibly fast. But those are the haters. Here's the math. Uh, 275K equals 137K after tax. Oh! oh! That's horrible. That's oh, horrible. shit! You know what these people I'm are? Sorry. the same tax rate! These are people who, who uh, you know, you're supposed to spend within your budget. But these are people who spend within their budget with the assumption that they're going to have a higher amount of income. Like they're going to get promoted or mm-hmm. they, they basically go like, oh, well, I've been at this job a little bit. By the time I'm here for a couple more years, I'm going to be making so much more money, it won't even matter. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. And they so they bought all this shit. These people I, are just stupid I, people. I, I hate them so much. And here's the thing. They go, <laughs> we can't afford to live here. Then live in Queens. Yeah, there move. you go. Problem solved. Move, but, but then I'll have to sell my Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, well, people don't understand that you don't have to spend all the money you have. You keep <laughs> no, this is America. You need to spend all the money you have. Yeah, plus you some you don't. Yeah, you're making an investment. You got to put it back in the economy, dude. <laughs> you invest anything in your about home. capitalism. Okay, Come on. next one. <laughs> Number three. Uh, so this is a little confusing. This is actually found by Glenn Greenwald, but the article is actually. Uh, from ABC News, and it says, was teen killed by CIA drone, a militant or innocent victim? There's a lot of evidence that he was innocent. Uh, so ABC News was trying to do some uh, investigation. Wait, and, they do that? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this this is a line from the article that Glenn Greenwald well, You have to explain out. the background, though, of what happened. To uh, basically, they bombed a Yeah, a one, of these drones, one of these drones blew up a car in Pakistan that had a teenager in it. Right. Uh, some people are saying, that the, well, the U.S. government saying the teenager was a terrorist, while people in Pakistan were saying this guy was like part of an anti-war rally yeah, group. Which is probably true. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> he was like 16, right? He's something like that. He was he a teenager. 16. Yeah. But um, basically, the whole thing, the whole reason this article is dumb is because of the line that this guy says. Yeah, this, and it's, it's very matter of fact. As for documentation of Tariq and Wahid's deaths, Akbar did not provide pictures of the missile strike scene. Virtually none exists since drones often target people who show up at the scene of an attack. So let's let's think about this. So So even if they kill a terrorist in a car, the people that show up to say, hey, what the fuck happened? That's who they really want to kill. They also kill those guys. Yeah. Yeah. So they've created a strategy. It's not the worst strategy. They go, okay, the insurgents are gonna hide. So let's just bomb these civilians. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I think you're projecting to a scurry the rats. Yeah. Right. They'll freak out, they'll run, they'll do something, then we can kill them. So that's their strategy. Now imagine you live in a city and your neighbor is a murderer, right? Just let's just say you're in the United States and you're in someone's. Imagine if the police had a ghetto bird come to your house and blow up your house. Go so well, I the think these criminals. Would yeah, come so up. they would scurry. Well, out. here's what I don't get. Now, if they want to avoid this kind of fallout from this, why wouldn't they just fake a 
you know, fake a explosion of a person or whatever? Why not just dr- blow up a car? Just a car. Well, I think they try to do that, but the problem is that when you do that, there's still probably people there, you know? Well, right, but they know. Well, they know to an extent. They can only see the top of the building. They don't know who's in it. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying, like, they bombed this kid's car, though. Right. Why not just bomb a car with no one in it? They don't know if there's Why people in it or not Why did they just not bomb beforehand? the people's cars in the first place? <laughs> well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they're, ass- they're assholes. I'm just speaking, like, in terms of logistics. Oh, who knows? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't understand it. So, it's whatever. confusing. Anyways, uh, number two is uh, PayPal is good. So uh, either one of you can explain um, this. There's, I think it was on the consumer or something. Yeah, it was on the consumer. Some guy was trying to sell uh, a violin for $2,500 that was apparently made before World War II and it survived World War II. Yes. I guess it was like a collector's item. He sold it to this dude. The guy who bought the violin disputed the fact that it was authentic and went to PayPal claims to try to get his money back. In order to get his money back, PayPal said, destroy the violin, send this photographic evidence, and we'll give you the money. The guy did so, got his money back, and uh, lo and behold, the violin was actually authentic, and the dude sold it out of his violin. Yeah, so, and the money. So that guy basically mm-hmm. lost a violin, uh, and that was in yeah. like that was basically an antique um, from before World War II. I don't think um, I could ever break a violin. That's so stupid. Why would you break any musical instrument? It's dumb, but well, unless you're Pete Townshend. But uh, the um, <laughs> the uh, the idea that they can just say destroy this piece of equipment rather than just send it back mm-hmm. and we'll issue your Completely refund retarded. is is so far beyond the scope of what should be legal. I don't I don't see how that is legal. Well, it, I it's think part it has of the to terms of counterfeit. They don't want yeah. to be liable. It's part for of counterfeiting. It's part of the terms of service when you use PayPal. Well, I agree. You, it, it is. But the thing how is, do how de- does PayPal know it's counterfeit? Yeah, exactly. They how, don't how, have did they, any, how did they determine that this guy said because, oh, it's fake? All because one stupid asshole says it's counterfeit. That doesn't mean that it is. Yeah, PayPal's you didn't horrible. Give them proof. <sighs> PayPal just and, and, goes on their own rules. And let me let me go off in just one second and say, what's to stop this guy from getting the violin? Going, getting a violin that looks exactly the same, yeah, exactly. and smashing the fuck That's out of it, <laughs> and and going, <laughs> hey, give him a twenty five hundred, and then just go and sell it. You know, I mean, and and probably the thing, if he's selling it for twenty five hundred over the internet, probably the thing with an, for an antique dealer is probably worth more than twenty five hundred, yeah. really. So this guy could have literally made five thousand dollars or more by just faking it, just completely faking it. PayPal's a big company. PayPal is a terrible, terrible company, <laughs> which is why that's how we accept our all our donations. Yeah, through PayPal. I don't use PayPal. They suck. I use them because there's nothing else. Yeah. That, that's, there's Bitcoins. That, yeah. <laughs> that's, going, that's going well. Uh, so number one, African-American teen missing since 2010, mistakenly deported to Columbia. <laughs> So, I don't think you really need to say much. That's the title let me, right there. Let me, this yeah. is horrible. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a pretty awesome story. So basically, Where this Where's the girl, story from? It's from, uh, it's from a weird site. It's from The Grio. But I've seen it well, in other places, Well, it's on too. other places. Is it like yeah. an APR but this, We'll just go on. I was looking for the one where they said she was pregnant. But anyways, so what happened was, uh, at the age of 14, uh, Houston police said that she was an illegal immigrant. And that she was a Colombian illegal immigrant. And she's like, no, I'm not. She spoke English, did not speak Spanish Spanish or Spanish. Portuguese. It's Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Portuguese is Brazil. Okay. Um, so, told him all this, you know. Obviously doesn't have a driver's license because she's 14. Yeah. And they just went, well, she is pretty brown. Let's, uh, let's just throw her on a boat. We'll ship it. her off. Yeah. So, they did that. And uh, so, they sent her to Colombia. And uh, her grandmother, who she lives with. Uh, Lauren Tur- Laureen Turner this is kind of horrible she stayed up many late nights for months searching on Facebook not no, don't look up Facebook not the place to <laughs> Grand- <laughs> grandmas aren't too smart well, unfortunately <laughs> yeah. I mean she had also alerted authorities and stuff well they finally found her she was in a Colombian uh, facility uh, and How long is like a there? detention facility or what uh, I think it was a detention facility, I'll basically because she got there and she was, they were like, you're not a citizen here, fuck, you're in this prison. Yeah. And so, anyways, so she's, they find her a year and a half later, and uh, she's also pregnant. So someone probably raped her. So that's cool. 
But did they, as she said anything about They this? haven't had complete contact with her yet. They I just see. have found She's her. She's in a Colombian prison. And yeah, so gonna they're, they, they're going to be able to get her out, but it's going to take time. Time for some settlements. Oh, yeah, that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, she's <laughs> going to make some serious. <laughs> you know, honestly, I, yes? I would probably take the trip and get bum raped <laughs> if, uh, if I could make the amount of money that she's going to. I mean, and that's a horrible thing to say. But, but you know rape isn't a laughing hey, matter. It really isn't. Beautiful? But there's a new Colombian citizen in this world, so. Nice. <laughs> well, we got to protect our borders. Guys. I just, I got to say, she is going to make some fucking bank from. Holy like, shit! Yes. She just lost two years of her life due to. Was it two years that she was gone? It was a yeah. year and a half. Year and Holy a half. Shit. But by the time she gets back, it'll be probably two years. That's a long time. She is going to be so rich. I mean, it's horrible what happened. I mean, it's awful, but yeah. protect yeah, our that's borders. That's a lot of money that she's going to get. But that's still. I mean, that, there's no excuse for that. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> It's like, hmm, she's speaking perfectly clean English, uh, no accent, because well, she's a U.S. citizen. Yeah, well, that's it. That's, that, that, that is a perfect example of the Her last current, name's Turner, like her grandma, maybe? It's, it's, the, perfect, it's the perfect <laughs> yeah, example Turner. of the, the current attitude toward uh, Latin people right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is how it is right now. It's that bad. You say she was black? She, she's black, she's, yeah. She's black, yeah. The Colombians are a little bit more brown, so. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Close enough? Well, close enough. We did it. We hit our quotas. Cool. Think the, think the ice guy feels any shame for doing that? No. I'm, I'm sure he's fucking terrified because he is... Yeah, well, exactly. He won't he's be not having ashamed. a job. He's not ashamed. No. He's scared. All right, well, that was episode 31 of yes, our podcast. So, if you guys want to send us any emails regarding Ryan's uh, Teach Me of Now That's What I Call Music... Send them to podcast at tipping40s.com or leave a voicemail at 218-666-8407. Yeah, also, if you can pick your favorite now, CD, we would love to see that. Now that's what I call a podcast.